All right, children, reaching the home stretch. I've actually kind of looked over what we've got left, and you know what? We're going to cover pretty much this entire course. Now, um, I'm not going to lie and say that it's the same as the experience of having been in class, but realistically, I think that you're all going to be set up really, really well for post-secondary. Um, the only thing that we will not have covered um, in this course that theoretically we might have otherwise is a little bit of torque and work and and those of you who need that are in physics so you'll get it there so we're going to talk today about um distances uh okay so distances now i'm out on my front deck because everywhere else every flat surface in our house right now pretty much is covered in stuff so i'm out on my front deck um on a table out here and it's lovely but it's really really bright so i might lose track of my cursor out here because my laptop screen isn't uber bright but here we go so distances, um, hope everyone is well. So first thing we're gonna look at is um, uh, from a line, what do you know, I don't know what that is, uh, from a line to a point, um, or from a point to a line, we're gonna start in R2. Um, hokey, my drawing tablet's getting hot just because of the sun. Uh, wow, where did it go? There it is. Uh, okay, so so what we're going to think about here is uh, let's look at a diagram to begin with, I guess. Um, so get me Cartesian plane, and then imagine we got this line. So here's another line. There it is, right there. And what we want to know is we've got this other random point out here. So I want to know what this distance right here is. Right? What's the distance between this line and this point? Um, so what we're going to do is is we can kind of say we know that the shortest distance so let's grab a different color here can i get a different color yeah uh if, if we think the shortest distance from a point to a line is obviously going to be um we know at right angles right so this this here is going to be the shortest distance or you know anytime we're talking about distance from a point to a line it's always going to be the shortest distance anytime we're talking about distances it's shortest distance Right, so this is the shortest distance. Now, um, we know it has to be perpendicular. So if we think about it being perpendicular, we could say, well, if we had this vector right here, that would be the normal vector, right? Because the normal vector is at right angles to this line. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a relatively random point anywhere on this line. So we can take any old point on this line. So I'm going to, you know, put it right there. And I'm going to call that P0 is just a random point. So this can be, and it doesn't have to be that one, just, you know, any point, oh, hello, crow, point on the line. Okay, so P0 is any point on the line, this guy right here. And so then what we're going to do, is we are going to construct a vector that goes from P naught to this point of interest. And I'm going to call this point of interest. This is going to be Q, and that is, you know, the point we're measuring. So the point measured. And I'm going to create a vector, P naught Q, and I'm going to project, remember projections, right? So projections are, you know, we have this bank of lights, right? So here's my light. I'm going to project. So we've got a light to project. We're going to project how long this vector is onto this normal vector. And you can imagine, like this normal vector, you know, there's no reason the normal vector couldn't just keep on going. It's big. But if we project the vector that goes from P naught Q onto the normal vector, what we're going to get is we're going to get the, the length that we need. Okay, so we're going to project P naught Q, right, so we're going to project P naught Q onto the normal vector. And remember, if we want to do a projection onto, so what that's going to look like is distance is going to be equal to p naught q 
dotted with the normal vector, right? Remember, that's how projections work. And because it's onto n, the onto vector goes in the bottom, and it is the magnitude of that guy. So that that's how we find the distance, right? So if I want to find the distance from a point to a line in R2, we're going to just take any random vector, uh, I can't remember, any random vector like what we've got right here, uh, or any random point on this line, and create a vector, p naught q, and project it onto the normal vector, and that is going to be the distance of our projection. Oh, hello, chipmunk, just crawled over my foot. Um, Alrighty, so what that means, let's look at an example. Okay. Let's actually do an example. So our example, let's say I want to find the distance from the point, um, we'll call it point Q, just because for consistency's sake, uh, 5, 8 to the line. Now I could give you any line equation that I wanted, but because we want the normal vector, it's nice if it's in Cartesian form or what we would have called standard form back in, in grade nine. So I'm gonna just simplify to the line L, uh, make it easy, uh, 7x plus y minus 23 equals zero. Okay, so we need, first off, any old point. So first thing we need to do is um, get a point on the line. And I'll call this L1, but on the line L1. So we need any old point. And it doesn't really matter what the point is. It just has to be a point. And you're like, oh, I, don't, I don't know. Well, there's a multitude of them. We just need to choose an ordered pair that satisfies this equation. So, I mean, in theory, if we made x 0, we could make y 23, right? 0 and 23 would make it hold. In theory, we could make this 1, and let's do some math. What would that be? Then I would need this to be, I guess, like 16 would be another point that we could use. But, you know, we're just going to go with the easiest points that we can get. So, so this, is our, this is my p naught right here. This is going to be my p naught. And then I need my normal vector. Well, if you remember, the normal vector is actually the A and B coefficient. So I don't really have a coefficient there, but I put a 1 in there. The normal vector is going to be 7 and 1. Okay? Um, goodness, people going up and down my road here. So we got P0. We've got our normal vector. We need P0 Q, right? So because we want to project P0 Q onto N. So I need a P0 Q, and so to go from 0 to 5 is going to be 5, and to go from 23 to 8, I guess, is going to be negative 15, right? So 5 and negative 15, there's my P-naught Q. All right, so we've got the constituent pieces that we need. So now we know that distance, okay, so distance is going to be equal to p naught q dotted with the normal vector over the magnitude of the normal vector. All right, well, p naught q, 0 times 5 is 0, so it's going to be 0. 23 times 15, oh, it's 230, plus 100 is 330, plus 15 is 345, so like negative 340, did I do that right? Three, do, do, do. Oh, p naught q times the normal vector. I was dotting with p naught. I'm silly. Let's try that again. 7 times 5 is 35. Okay, so let's clear that up. It's so bright out here, it's hard for me to see that little cursor or the little pointer for my... Oop, did I not select it? Get back here. I want the hard eraser. Yes. Hard eraser. Why? Are you, there we go. All right, back to the pen. Uh, so normal vector P naught Q. So 7 times 5 is 35. And then dotted 1 times negative 15 is just negative 15. And then the magnitude of the normal vector. Well, really, it's Pythagorean theorem, right? So um, we're going to have the root of um, 7 squared plus 1 squared. So that's going to be equal to uh, 20 over the root of 49.50. So that's 20 over the root of 50. 
And if we're, you know, sort of responsible, we're going to multiply, well, we'll make it more obvious. We're going to rationalize the denominator on that thing. So we're going to multiply by root 50 over root 50. And we would get, um, that's going to be just 50. So uh, two fifths uh, root 50. And then I guess we can do even better than that because 50 uh, is going to be 2 over 5. And 50, just to make it obvious, is going to be 25 times 2. Uh, and so that means that the root of 25 is 5, so that goes away there. And we're going to then get, uh, do, 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 um, I guess that would be 2 root 2. Right? So there is the distance that that point is from that line. And again, that's the, obviously, it's the shortest distance of that point from that line. Okay. Um, so, uh, lovely. We can, and so that, that's, that's exactly how it works. Now we can, we can generalize this and we can, you know, for like, this is how I would always figure it out. Um, because I, it, it's, it's sensible to me. And I'm, as I've said before, my memory is abysmal, but in general, we can, we can kind of come up with a, a formula that is an acceptable. You can just jump right into the formula. Um, so I'll, in general, the distance uh, formula for, who my tablet's really hot, for the point Q, which I'm just going to call X naught, Y naught, um, to the line. Uh, AX plus BY plus C equals zero is, and, and I'm going to derive it because I think it's important that you come, you can see where it's coming from. So we know that distance is equal to P naught Q uh, dotted with the normal vector over the magnitude of the normal vector. Okay. Well, if we say, all right, so that's going to then be P naught Q is going to be, um, what we can have is it's going to be uh, X naught minus K. And so I'll just say um, we're going to take our general point, so random point on the line is going to be the point, um, I'll just call it K and L. Okay, so P naught Q. So to go from P naught, this is sort of my P naught here. Uh, P naught, P naught Q is going to be um, X naught minus K, right? So X naught minus K, comma, and then it's going to be Y naught minus L dotted with the normal vector. Well, in this case, we can see hopefully that the normal vector for this guy is A B. So dotted with a b, right, uh, over the magnitude of the normal vector. Well, the normal vector is still a b, right? So it is uh, the root of a squared plus b squared. Okay, so simplify that out a bit. We're going to dot product this. So we're going to have a x naught minus a k uh, plus b y naught minus b l over the root of a squared plus b squared. And then rearrange a little bit. Um, uh, hello, wasp. I would prefer that you didn't land on me, but you're going to. Um, the risk of doing this in the great outdoors. Uh, where did my... Where's my There's my cursor. Uh, okay, sorry. Distracted by a, I think it's a wasp. Um, so if I rearrange, we're going to get AX naught plus BY naught. Oh, goodness, I have two of them now. Yay me. And what if I'm near a, a hive out here somewhere? Hmm. Uh, minus, there, it's gone. AK minus BL over the root of A squared plus B squared. So 
this is like kind of a weird like what what what's the dealio with that um we know so we know the point um kl is on the line right because we defined it as that so it's on the line and so that means that if we think about the line ax plus by plus c equals zero right and we know that because this point is on the line we know then that oh i'm really losing track there it is um a k plus b l plus c must equal zero because this point is on the line right we know it must satisfy that equation so i can move those over and so then i would be c is equal to negative a k minus b l well look what we got there there's my a k minus my b l so i can replace that and we can say that a x naught plus b y naught plus c over the root of a squared plus b squared and that is our distance and that children for those of you who are good at the remembering of the formulas that is the formula for the distance that we had before and so what we can do is we can let's check it with that same last example that we used uh, and so we're going to say check with example one or check with the earlier example Ooh, genuinely this tablet's hot enough it's hurting my hand i'm gonna have to as soon as i'm done this example i think i'm gonna stop the video and head into a different location maybe in the basement i think there's maybe a table down there that i can work on okay uh so we're gonna check with the earlier example um so we know here that it's going to be distance is equal to um seven because it was so remember the line uh, let me go back up and just take a look at the line so the line that we're dealing with is 7x plus 1y minus 23. So I'm going to just take and I get to substitute um, the point 5, 8 uh, because that's what we were using, right? So we can just substitute the point into the equation. So it's actually, it's kind of cool. So it's 5 um, plus 1 times 8 um, minus 23 over um, the root of seven squared plus one squared right and so what we did is if we think that the the line was seven x um ooh, burning plus one y minus 23 equals zero and the point that we wanted to check was five and eight so what i've done is i've substituted the point into the x and the y in the numerator that's all it is and then the denominator is just the magnitude of the normal vector Right, and so that's going to be 35 plus 8 minus 23 over that is the root of 50. Um, and so if we add that up, that is going to be 35 plus 8 is 43, so that's going to be 20. So it's 20 over root 50, which we simplified earlier and we know is 2 root 2. So, you know, that's as formulas to memorize go, that's not a bad one because really all we're going to do. Is you take and you substitute the point of interest into the equation the cartesian equation or the standard form equation that's the numerator and it's going to be over top of the magnitude of the normal vector in the denominator okay so there we go um lesson is not done but i am going to stop this right now so that i can move somewhere that i can actually see my screen a little more readily